Hello, and welcome to Safe Schools. I'm Andy Howard with Mobile County Public School System. And I'm Commander Curtis Grace with the Mobile Police Department. Listen, Curtis, uh, this, this is a, a continuation of a very important conversation. Uh, we're going to be talking about COVID today. And I, I don't know a topic that hadn't had much more attention than COVID uh, right now, and certainly one of the most important conversations we could be having right well, who's now. Who's not talking about COVID, right? Uh, nobody. Uh, <laughs> nobody. But we're going to talk to some people who know something right? <laughs> versus some people who are guessing something. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to try to have a conversation to get away from the guesses and get to the nose. Uh, today we're going to have uh, two of my favorite people. Uh, as our guest today, um, Dr. Errol Crook, University of South Alabama uh, Medical School, uh, and uh, Dr. Andrew Howard, the third, the uh, third, okay. pharmacist right. uh, with CVS, and, and these two gentlemen are gonna grace us with some detail and some knowledge about COVID. Sounds great. I'm looking forward to it. We'll be right back. I'm Ashley Rich, Mobile County District Attorney. The failure to obey school bus safety laws will cost you. It can cost you up to a $3,000 fine and the loss of your driving privileges. But more than that, it could cost the life of a child. That's why the Mobile County Public School System is urging you to stop and obey all bus traffic laws. Hi, I'm Pat Mitchell, Director of Transportation for the Mobile County Public School System. We're asking you to obey all bus safety laws. It could save a life. Remember, stop ahead when you see red. Our future depends on it. The Mobile County Public Schools Signature Academies program offers a variety of specialized curriculum for highly interested and motivated students. These academies provide students with choices ranging from aviation to healthcare, advanced information technology to international studies, from engineering to coastal studies. These high quality hands-on programs prepare students for careers readily available in Mobile County. Signature Academies program. Uh, and we're back. Uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Crook. Uh, we appreciate you coming on with us. Well, happy to be here. I really look forward to, have, to the conversation today. Um, it's, 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 it's always a pleasure. Uh, you visited with us before, and, and, and I thought that was a great uh, conversation. Uh, this one is a super important one today. Um, uh, for our audience's uh, information, Dr. Crook is at USA uh, Medical School. So he's a doctor who teaches doctors how to be doctors. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty big to me. That's correct. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, our, our second guest today is uh, a guest I was able to get for the cheap, uh, Dr. Andrew Howard uh, III. Uh, he's a pharmacist of CVS. And uh, a guy I have some, uh, some affiliation with. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is my son. Um, I wanted a pharmacist. I had access to one. So here we are. Thanks for coming, Andrew. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Um, I am a product of the Mobile County Public School System. I went to O'Rourke Elementary. I went to uh, Sydney Phillips Preparatory School. I went to Murphy High School. I took that education. I went all the way up to Virginia uh, to go to Historically Black College University, Hampton University, the real HU. Uh, and I was able to uh, get into pharmacy school and get my doctor of pharmacy. I got my license and came on back to the hometown. Um, I love the culture and the community, obviously, of Mobile. So I decided to come back and try to uh, expand and help the community uh, by working as a pharmacist at CVS. Well, Andrew, you're absolutely doing that right now with what you're doing, especially in light of all the things that we're dealing with in our country and, and the world with this pandemic. So. Uh, we appreciate your service and what you're doing for our community, uh, as well as Dr. Crook. So let's dive right into it, Andy. Thank you. Let's do. Uh, Dr. Crook. Yes. Welcome, and, and I'm going to jump in with a um, little bit of a discussion about COVID. Uh, if you take a vaccine, Dr. Crook, I can have. you catch COVID? So actually, no. Uh, you know, <laughs> with the flu, one of the comments we often hear from uh, individuals who are hesitant to get the flu vaccine is the last time I took the flu vaccine, I caught the flu. So you, you cannot catch it uh, with COVID. In fact, this vaccine does not have any part of the viral particle in it. In fact, it has the 
uh, parts of the genetic code called the messenger RNA in it. And it encodes for a piece of the virus that the virus use, uses to enter cells and infect cells and make people sick. So since it doesn't include any of the viral particle that's infective, it are, uh, it can, you will not catch COVID. Now, you might, because your immune system is supposed to, will respond to this, have flu-like symptoms for a while. You might get some aches and pains and, uh, and chills and body aches, but that means your, your body's immune system is responding in the appropriate way. You should be happy about that, if, particularly after you get the booster vaccine, if that happens. And Dr. Crow, I have a question for you. Uh, the, uh, real world uh, issue that, that happened recently with a friend of mine, he had the second dose of the Pfizer, uh, and sometime after that, uh, developed symptoms uh, and was later uh, told that he had COVID. Now, hmm. everything that you said right now is all, from what I understand prior to you even sharing this, is accurate. But what he also learned from his doctor is that, you know, his exposure to COVID in and of itself actually probably predated him getting the vaccine or actually letting the vaccine build up in a system to where he is, could become protected from it. Is that accurate? Yes, that is correct. So there, there are, now that we've vaccinated millions of people worldwide, there are instances where people had had exposure to COVID and were asymptomatic and therefore went, went for it with the vaccine, not knowing about symptoms became symptomatic afterward and then tested for COVID. So th those are instances that happen that is not related to the vaccine. I will, I'll go on to say that you know, I, I've had the vaccine uh, here recently within a week and a half ago, and I had COVID approximately 50 days before that. So even with the first vaccine, since my immune system had already recognized COVID had a response, I had a response in that first 24 hours that was pretty significant. I had aches and pains, I even had fever and chills that lasted for 24 hours, symptoms taken care of with Tylenol, and then was gone after that. Uh, and that's because my immune system had, was already primed, so to speak, because of me having had the infection. Uh, I can personally speak um, for uh, those of us who are recovered from the infection. I don't recommend the infection for anyone. And the vaccine is the thing that uh, protects us from getting the infection. And, and most importantly, when you look at the data from all the vaccine trials, there are really, has been really no one, this is out of tens of thousands of people, particularly with the Moderna and Pfizer trials, that got a serious infection after completing the two vaccine uh, series. And I guess just to sum it up, people need to understand that once you get your vaccine, uh, you don't instantly have the immunity from the virus in and of itself. So right. you're still exposed to it or you can't, because you're out in the public or you may come into contact with someone who's been in the public, therefore uh, you can still uh, get infected uh, by the virus. Yes. Um, the development of this vaccine, one of the concerns that I hear in the community is the length of time that they perceive that it took for the vaccine to be developed. And so there's this hesitancy that you hear um, from members of the community about why they are uncomfortable with taking the vaccine. What, what, what do you think about that, Dr. Kirker? How, how do you respond yeah. to that? So, you know, I think there are a couple of things. One, we gave it a name, Operation Warp Speed. <clears throat> And things were politicized also uh, during the, over the last year. It's just the nature of what we we're dealing with. But it is important to understand that the basic technology from which particularly the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are based goes back now two decades. They were developed uh, in many cases in response to things like SARS and Ebola and other coronaviruses that had pretty significant impact. And as, those, as we got past those scares, 
the technology, the development of the technology slowed down because there wasn't the urgent need. And then the need popped up quite urgently with uh, our sars v corona 2 COVID-19. And they basically were able to move forward with this technology. The warp speed, you know, it's a name for the operation. And what, what really happened here was something that was actually quite innovative in that the, the federal government of both the U.S. and many of the European countries said, this is really important. It costs a lot of money for any company to develop a vaccine. You invest in, case, in some cases billions of dollars for something that may not work. So the government said, we're going to take away that financial risk. We're going to fund this. We're going to have multiple uh, groups working on it at the same time. And hopefully, we're going to have one or two of these that are successful. And that is, in fact, what happened. So I think uh, should not be uh, a fearful of the fact that this was something that came to fruition over the course of the last year. Uh, it is based on technology that goes back two decades and has been sort of slowly percolating over that time. We want to take a quick commercial break, but we definitely, when we get back, we want to talk more about uh, what you just mentioned. We'll be right back. To be in the AP program, it not only offers you great opportunities in the classroom, but also outside. Like being a member of the AP program, I can come into college already being a sophomore in college, so I can completely skip one year just by completing all my AP credits and by taking the classes and passing the exams. I would recommend other students to take AP classes because being a member of the program offers so many benefits and helps you decide what you want to do in the future and where you want to go with your life. And we're back. Uh, Dr. Howard, I, I, I got a question for you about the proactive a actions on the part of trying to protect yourself. So we talk about, of course, masking and, and, and social mm -hmm. distancing, and, and we talk about washing our hands. But in addition to that, is there anything that somebody shows up at the pharmacy and says, is there something I can take? Yeah. Besides the vaccine? Absolutely. So there are uh, quite a few OTC recommendations that have been floating around. Um, all things aimed at increasing your immune system. So there is a threat. There is a problem. And you can treat that problem. But the first thing you want to do is prevent it from ever happening, if that be the case. Um, things like vitamin C. Um, things like vitamin D. People who are deficient in vitamin D have seen to be at higher risk of um, suffering those more severe illnesses once they have gotten infected, if that be the case. So you wear your mask, you social distance, you wash your hands, don't touch your face, you use hand sanitizer, you do all those things that you're supposed to do, but then what else can you do? I am a comorbid patient, I have, I have all these comorbidities, these other things, what can I do to support my own immune health to help those things? So like I said, vitamin C, vitamin D, there's elderberry, um, zinc, all these things are potentially beneficial um, but you still need to ask and rec uh, go with the recommendation of your physician because specified patient factors can change what is most important for you to take. Um, those things just go all into this whole idea of if everybody does, their, does everything right, which potentially is not going to happen, can I still do something further than to make myself more comfortable before I'm actually vaccinated um, so that I can protect myself further in the future. So what are these supposed to assist, help your immune response? Or, or what? Yeah, uh, so these are things that just help with factors um, that your immune system needs. If you are deficient in something, your immune system cannot respond fully in the way that it needs to. So supplementing those things um, is always a beneficial thing to those that need them. Um, obviously, if everybody could get lab work done, 
and find out what they are specifically deficient in, that that would be the most likely and reasonable case. Um, Dr. Cook, I believe you could be able to speak a little bit more yeah, on well, it. Well, I would just say uh, on top of uh, things that uh, Dr. Howard just mentioned uh, is to remain vigilant about your, your health. Uh, the conditions that you had prior to COVID still exist. So while we talk about diabetes and high blood pressure, but diabetes in particular being one of those comorbid conditions that put you at higher risk for serious infection, we also know that if your diabetes is under control, you're less likely to suffer the serious infection. And these are controllable uh, diseases. I think it's also important that in this time where we're isolating ourselves, uh, that you can't ignore the usual screenings you should go through for cancer screenings and other screenings for things like diabetes, high blood pressure. You need to still engage with your healthcare professionals, you know, that, you know, physicians, pharmacists, your dental health, all those things remain important. And we're gonna be dealing with this for, for some time. You have to make sure you focus on maintaining your overall health. You know, one of the things that we, we talked about before was uh, how some think that they are not uh, uh, predisposed to getting the virus because they don't have uh, what they deem as underlying health issues. Uh, and we, we jokingly but seriously talked about the fact that we all have some underlying condition. We just don't know it oftentimes. Uh, and some of the populations that are being affected more often than not are our populations of color. Uh, what would either one of you want to add to that conversation or to that statement as opposed to getting people to truly understand that, that, that regardless of how you may feel, uh, anyone can actually have a very bad outcome with COVID? Yeah, um, I'd probably say amongst the younger community, um, there's this sense of um, invulnerability. Nothing can get me. I am strong, I'm healthy. Uh, I don't have an issue. I also haven't been to the doctor in five years. <laughs> um, <laughs> those go hand in hand. Um, if you don't get regular checkups, how would you know? Um, people don't have health insurances, they don't think that they need it. All of this plays into the part of um, the importance of, like Dr. Krug was saying, your overall health. Um, not knowing is worse than knowing, um, and at least being having the knowledge to be able to do something about it. Um, CVS, um, call ourselves the, uh, the telephone terrorist. Um, you get a prescription filled, we will call and call and call to make sure that people are adherent. Um, people don't like to go to the doctor. My patients say, can you call my doctor? Well, your prescription expired, it's a year old, you probably need to go back for a checkup. And all that is important um, to just go for it, normal checkups as it is. Um, so part of what I do is managing patient profiles, um, making those follow-up calls when needed, um, drug interactions. People go to uh, multiple doctors, they'll go to a specialist, they'll have an acute issue, they'll go to urgent care when they can't get to see their uh, physician for a visit and they'll have prescriptions that interact. Um, I'm supposed to be the one to say, okay, well, I'm pretty sure your primary doesn't know that you're taking this and this. You should probably separate these doses or contact them to find out where they wanna go with therapy. Um, Dr. Cook, that's probably a large part of what you do. Well, um, let's, let's do this because this yep. is something that we need to continue to have under discussion about. So we're going to take a quick commercial break and we're going to get right back into this topic. We'll be right back. I'm Ashley Rich, Mobile County District Attorney. The failure to obey school bus safety laws will cost you. It can cost you up to a $3,000 fine and the loss of your driving privileges. But more than that, it can cost the life of a child. That's why the Mobile County Public School System is urging you to stop and obey all bus traffic laws. Hi, I'm Pat Mitchell, Director of Transportation for the Mobile County Public School System. We're asking you to obey all bus safety laws. It could save a life. Remember, stop ahead when you see red. Our future depends on it. The Mobile County Public Schools Signature Academies program offers a variety of specialized curriculum for highly interested and motivated students. These academies provide students with choices ranging from aviation to healthcare, advanced information technology to international studies, from engineering to coastal studies. These high quality hands-on programs prepare students for careers readily available in Mobile County. Signature Academies program.
let's get back into it. We, we were talking, um, Andrew, Dr. Howard, about some things relative to, to just uh, those who may find themselves uh, exposed or infected when they think that they have no vulnerability. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, it goes to what are the mythology, the conspiracy, um, and it just has to do with playing with culture. Um, what we as a community believe to be true um, and what leads into the mistrust of the information um, from legitimate sources at that. Um, for instance, uh, the Tuskegee experiments that happened, um, 1932 to 1972, um, and how long that lasted. That was hindering the black community and it still is today greatly uh, because of the misbelief, the mistrust. Um, I'm on social media and I hear people, celebrities promoting, taking the vaccine, hey, I've had my doses, and then first thing out of people's mouth is Tuskegee, Tuskegee. Um, and they have not read anything about the Tuskegee experiments at all. As a doctor, does that kind of irk you a little bit, irritate you when you see <laughs> that, when you know the importance of, yeah. of what, what's needed and where we, where we are right now? And the fact that people are giving out so much misinformation uh, when they have not checked the source of the information to, to find out that they're giving misinformation. That's a big, that's a big deal. So just real briefly, you know, the, the Tuskegee experiment was set up to understand what the natural history of syphilis would be. During the course of the experiment, and these were black men enrolled in Tuskegee, there was a effective treatment discovered the egregious decision was made to not treat these individuals so that they could uh, still see what the natural history would be. And we all, everyone now recognizes that, that was unethical and, the, and those families have been paid for generations. So if one chooses not to take care of themselves now and do things that have been proven effective like the vaccine, wearing a mask, washing hands, socially distanced, you are, in fact, putting yourself in the position of the participants in the Tuskegee experiment by basically showing what the natural history would be by not being in, uh, treated. The treatment was tested in African Americans. There were African American investigators on the vaccine trials. It's important to know, been working on it for two decades, uh, a couple of the lead investigators. So this is an issue of where people of all ethnicities, races, socioeconomic status will benefit from the vaccine and the precautions that have been prescribed to prevent the spread of COVID. You know, I'm sorry, Andy. Uh, this information is so important uh, because we say we want to get back to normal, quote unquote. Uh, but how do we do that without really paying attention and actually trying to understand the importance of vaccination? Uh, we want our schools back the way that they were. We want to be able to go and, and have dinner uh, in public. We want to interact with one another. But in order to get there, we have to understand that these barriers that we create are hindering us from doing that. So I really appreciate this conversation and I just, Andy, you were about to say something. I don't want to just. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm just co-signing actually, Curtis, with, with, with what you're saying. You know, um, there's a trust issue. And one of the trust issues is, it's too few guys and girls, out, men and women out there who look like Dr. Crook and Dr. Howard. Mm. Um, but Dr. Crook's working on that. We are working on that. Uh, but in the meantime, the idea of you doing the opposite of what's in your own best interest uh, based on what you heard in social media. Um, we, Dr. Crook, we talked briefly before we uh, came on the show, an example, uh, the death of Hank Aaron, a Mobile legend. Yes, yes. You know, so uh, Mr. Aaron had a vaccination and I think it was Within a couple of weeks later, he, he passed. And so because of that timing, he, uh, uh, there was some concern that he may have died because of the vaccine. At that same day, uh, Andrew Young, who's a year older than Mr. Aaron, and Louis Sullivan, the former uh, 
president of Morehouse College and secretary of the HHS uh, had his vaccine, and he was 90. They're doing fine. And amongst the 75 years and older population, you know, that's a population that has death happening every day. And when you, when, when you vaccinate millions of them, some of those deaths are going to correlate around the time of the vaccine. But it's not, we have not yet seen the vaccine to be the cause of death in anyone as of yet. What would either one of you guys say to those people that as we go on our social media pages, we see people who are, are conjured up together, uh, unmasked, um, what would you want them to know about the seriousness of not just uh, uh, the original strand of COVID, but all the others that have come since that time? I think it's important to note that the person that you may hurt may be someone that you don't even know. Uh, could be two or three passages of the virus away from you, and, and you need to look, but it's probably going to still be within your community. And we have these new strains that are being developed that are out there now that are, appear to be more infectious, but fortunately covered by the vaccine. But because they're more infectious, you can really have more of an impact. It could be not only that person, two or three people down the line that you don't know, but somebody you love dearly and would gravely miss. This is important. And we've got to continue to talk to each other and convince each other that taking the shot and social distancing and wearing a mask are important. Guys, as we wrap up, uh, if you both can share contact information, or if anyone wants to reach out to either one of you, how would they go about doing that? Andrew? Uh, well, I am at TVS Pharmacies um, on MLK Avenue. You can contact me at 251-471-6229. I'm there half the time. If not, leave a message. You can talk to me personally. I will ask you any, answer any questions that you have um, and give you just any insight that you are possibly looking for and lead you to the right resource. Um, or just go to CVS.com for more COVID information and updates as they come. Um, and just be ready. And I'm at University of South Alabama Health. So you go to the USA Health website and you can use the main number there and there to get you directed to me. Folks, I really appreciate you guys coming on today. Uh, the information that you share is invaluable. There's no way um, that we can put value on this information. We just really appreciate the fact that, that you shared all this with us today, and we hope that you come back on and share uh, more information that, um, as we deal with this pandemic. Looking forward to it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, and thanks for being safe schools.